Hi, my name is Anthony Mando and I am with the Robotics and Mechatronics Group at Universidad de Málaga in Spain. In this work, we present the experimental validation of a robotic stretcher for casualty evacuation, which was performed during a man-made disaster exercise with actual rescue specialists. I'll start the presentation with some context about the disaster response exercises conducted by Universidad de Málaga. Then I present how the Rambler robot was adapted to incorporate a stretcher. I'll give some detail about the development of the exercise. And finally, I'll discuss lessons learned and conclusions. The exercise was done in cooperation with the Chair for Security and Disasters at Universidad de Málaga. Among the activities organized by the Chair is an annual workshop attended by hundreds of participants from Spanish government and non-government organizations. One of the highlights of these workshops is a large-scale disaster response exercise. In the last years, these exercises have been conducted in a dedicated experimental area in our university campus. This experimental area for emergency response is very close to our robotics lab building and this is about 90,000 square meters of natural terrain with different elevations where we have rubble, we have uh, buried pipes, we have crashed cars and vegetation. And this is a layout of the 2019 exercise where the validation of a robotic stretcher was done with an actual military rescue team. There was an explosion within an unsafe hot zone at the point of injury, so there was a casualty that had to be rescued. In the safe area, there was the tent for the first response post, and there's also the tent for the robot teleoperation post. So the mission consisted on two phases. The, the first phase was the extraction from the hot zone, so the robot was teleoperated to the point of injury and then back to the first response post. And in the second phase, after first uh, medical treatment, there was an evacuation route from the first response post to a helicopter rendezvous point for aeromedical evacuation. In order to perform this exercise, we needed to modify the Rambler robot to safely carry a stretcher. This robot has dimensions and a payload which are enough for carrying a single person. The weight of the robot is 460 kilograms. It can reach up to 80 kilometers per hour in straight line motion because this is a skid steer vehicle and it's driven by four independent brushless hub motors and powered by batteries. As you can see, the robot has an arc for holding different equipment and sensors, uh, so we needed to find a stretcher that could fit in there with a person on top. We found this foldable blue stretcher with very short legs, the front legs have wheels and uh, on top of it there's a rigid orange stretcher that was provided by the rescuers the same day of the exercise because they thought this could be more stable for the casualty and also it could be used during the transfer to the helicopter later. The modifications for Rambler included front-end wheel brackets to hold the motion of the wheels after rolling and also a locking mechanism for the rear end so that the stretcher was stable. Another interesting aspect that we had to deal with was uh, teleoperation. We did not want communications to be an issue during the experiment, so we used a bonding protocol with two redundant 4G providers. We had a router in our uh, lab building and this was used to manage the communications between a router on board of the Rambler robot and another router for the teleoperation post. 
The teleoperation post had the interface you can see in the photograph and we also had a tablet version of this same interface that could be used for direct line of sight control of the vehicle. The exercise was conducted in a one-shot realistic basis with the actual rescuers in the morning of June the 6th, 2019. That same morning, we had a meeting to show them of the rolling in and the locking mechanism. They wanted to try it with a dummy, but also with an actual person, an actual volunteer. They came up with the idea of adding a, a second rigid stretcher on top of our own stretcher. And then the exercise started with a simulated explosion at the point of injury and a request to extract the casualty received by the combat medical unit. In the command tent area, the military first response post was the base for the robot, which was operated from this red robot teleoperation post. From this tent, we were controlling and supervising a team of robots that were also participating in the exercise. This included a UAV that carried a defibrillator and another UGV for terrain inspection and measurement of environmental variables. In this work, we are focusing on the robotic stretcher part of the team. In the first phase, after we received notice that the casualty had been located, we teleoperated Rambla to the point of injury. There, the rescuers extracted the victim, which was a dummy, from the explosion area and inserted the stretcher back on top of the robot. When we were told so, we teleoperated the vehicle back to the first response post, which was escorted by the rescuers under continuing attacks in the hot zone. In the first response post, the cooperative exercise continued with initial medical attention and they also requested a helicopter for aeromedical evacuation. When the helicopter was approved, we started the second phase of the robotic stretcher mission. In this phase, it was agreed that the robot would carry a human volunteer as the evacuation path was on almost flat terrain. Besides, in this case, the operation of the vehicle was done with direct line of sight with a portable tablet device. When the robot reached the helicopter rendezvous point, the casualty was taken to the ground with a stretcher and protected from the dust projected by the helicopter. The evacuation litter was descended from the helicopter and the casualty was moved to it on the orange rigid stretcher. Meanwhile, the Rambler robot was driven back to the base. So overall, the results from the exercise were satisfactory and the mission goals were achieved. However, there are some issues that are worth mentioning. The first one was that there were over two minutes lost when the rescuers had some confusion regarding the correct insertion direction of the stretcher when they were extracting the casualty from the point of injury. Of course, this possibly has something to do with the design limitations of adapting an existing robot. However, the confusion could have been avoided had we added intuitive signs for the users on the robot platform. A second issue was that the rescuers were not very happy 
with the speed of the teleoperated vehicle when escorting the casualty through the hot zone. Basically, their point was that in an unsafe situation, they could not afford to adapt their pace to that of the robot. In consequence, a follow-the-leader algorithm would be a desirable feature. The third issue that we faced during the exercise was that we lost the onboard router due to the dust and particles projected by the helicopter. Fortunately, our portable teleoperation system has a rigid support that allows free hands for the operator, who also had a wireless joystick for direct control of the vehicle, so it was possible to drive the vehicle back to the base. The bottom line is real conditions are harsh and fault tolerance and redundancy become crucial. In this work, we have presented an experience where search and rescue specialists have cooperated with our robotics research group to validate a robotic stretcher. Our goal was to provide a robotic solution that could be accepted and integrated into the procedures of actual responders. The validation was done during a one-shot cooperative exercise with strong timing constraints under realistic conditions. The members of the military rescue team that tested the system had no previous experience with the robot. In general, we have received positive feedback from the users. The results from the experience and the information provided by the users can be useful to improve the technology readiness level of this solution. And this is the end of our presentation. Thank you.